brought his name together. I sought the Lord, and he heard me, and delivered me from all my fears. They looked to him and were radiant, and their faces were not ashamed. This poor man cried out, and the Lord heard him, and saved him out of all his troubles. The angel of the Lord encamps all around those who fear him, and delivers them. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good, blessed is the man who trusts in him. Oh, fear the Lord, you his saints. There is no want to those who fear him. The young lions lack and suffer hunger, but those who seek the Lord shall not lack any good thing. Come, you children, listen to me. I will teach you the fear of the Lord. Who is the man who desires life and loves many days that he may see good? Keep your tongue from evil and your lips from speaking deceit. Depart from evil and do good. Seek peace and pursue it. The eyes of the Lord are on the righteous and his ears are open to their cry. The face of the Lord is against those who do evil, to cut off the remembrance of them from the earth. The righteous cry out, and the Lord hears, and delivers them out of all their troubles. The Lord is near to those who have a broken heart, and saves such as have a contrite spirit. Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivers him out of them all. He guards all his bones, not one of them is broken. Evil shall slay the wicked, and those who hate the righteous shall be condemned. The Lord redeems the soul of his servants, and none of those who trust in him shall be condemned. Psalm 30 I will extol you, O Lord. For you have lifted me up, and have not let my foes rejoice over me. O Lord my God, I cried out to you. What began as a collection of individuals, passion. Hello everyone, let me know if you have audio so we can get started. We're doing another stream on Hinduism and we're going to be reviewing Hindu scripture. The way no other channel does, by the way. Um, we're going to be trying to stay as objective as possible. You guys could fact check me and in the live chat and let me know if I'm being, you know, either bias i mean of course we're all biased but maybe you could help me be less biased but we're going to try to see if my interpretation of the hindu scripture that we're going to be reading today um is good or you guys have a different interpretation by the way i have been having sessions outside of these streams with an ex-hindu atheist who is very knowledgeable about hinduism uh with the channel uh, the person that i talked to that you, you could go subscribe to the channel. It's called the Queer Indian Atheist. Um, so make sure you go subscribe to that channel. I should have, I forgot to put the link in the description. After the stream, I'll put the link in the description. So make sure you go do that. But I've been fact checking everything with them. Uh, but you could continue fact checking with me while I go through learning about Hindu scripture. Okay, cool. So that sounds fun. Anyways, today we're going to look at one of the books, one of the Puranas, right? And a specific verse, and just to, I'm going to read the verse to you guys, and we're going to try to figure out what it's you know what it's trying to say, say, but also then read the entire context, okay? Because a lot of times us atheists, when we look at a verse and it seems like problematic, people accuse us of not putting it in context. So we want to make sure that we put it in context and make sure we're not ju judging it on its own okay we're going to read as much of the chapter as we can okay but let's first go through the verse then look at what this if this verse in, is in a book that matters at all um and then 
um, to see that what the standing of this scripture is. Is this an important scripture? Is it not? Is just is it just a minor text that nobody gives a crap about? Um, and then go look at the see what the whole issue, what the whole chapter is. Are you saying it's from the future? One possible future. From your point of view, I don't know tech stuff. Then you're from the future too, is that right? Right. Right. Someone's gonna feel pain. I do. Don't do that again. Listen and understand that Terminator is out there. It can't be bargained with. It can't be reasoned with. It doesn't feel pity or remorse or fear. Ark Encounter owner Ken Ham sues insurance company for rain damage. Ark Encounter, a young Earth creationist theme park in Williamstown, Kentucky, filed a lawsuit against its insurance company to collect damages caused by heavy rains in 2019. The park is the brainchild of Ken Ham, a Christian fundamentalist, and is known for its life-size replica of Noah's Ark. This massive 500 feet long, foot long <laughs> centerpiece is based on the vessel that saved all life in the apocalyptic flood as narrated in the Bible. The Ark also claims to be the largest timber frame structure in the world. Heavy rainfall in 2017 and 2018 caused landslides that blocked the roads that led to it, costing the theme park almost a million dollars in damages. The theme park has filed... Alright, great. I see some people joining us on Facebook, and I think we should be live on YouTube as well now. People in the live chat, uh, please let us know how the audio is. Uh, Jesus, so scores. Okay, I see people. Vikram is joining. Jonathan is joining. Uh... God, the guy is in the green shirt is so cute. Oh, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> that's sweet. Why couldn't I be wearing green? <laughs> <laughs> wow, that's, uh, that was a good start to the show. Uh, guys, can anybody tell us how the audio is? Can you hear us both? Everything good? Audio level is okay? Actually, let me just bring the sound as well. We're going to get started very soon. Anyways, I think the audio is fine. Are you good, Armin? Thank you, Axel. Finally, somebody confirmed. Okay, good. Hi, David. Hey, how's it going? Good, good. How are you? I'm good. Uh, can you introduce yourself before we get started? Uh, my name is David Wood. I'm technically a philosopher who became a YouTuber because I uh, realized that this is an awesome era of humanity for um, sharing information around the world, and so I, I basically jumped on the, the YouTube bandwagon and have a lot of fun talking about stuff on, on the internet. Right, well, the new stuff. What's on the rules for breakfast today? Get up, my boy. I'm going to shut down, get down, trust me. No stopping me. Go get it from me. All right, so here's a little video showing us swath grazing. Some people call it windrow grazing. Uh, it's where we've come through and actually cut the crop with the disc and laid it in a windrow for the cows to eat. And uh, this is a tool that we use every now and again. We don't do a whole lot of it. Honestly, I don't really count it as grazing myself because the crop's been cut. But we've come through the disc bind, we've cut it and left it in a windrow, and then uh, let, leave the cows out here to eat it. We're using this in this field because we've got some weed pressure. We've got a lot of uh, barnyard grass, some people call it water grass, and it's uh, it's headed out. And once it's headed out, the cows just won't touch it. They won't eat it, and they'll just leave it. They'll eat all the good stuff and leave that. There's also some common ragweed out here and some other weeds. And it's a good way to get your field cleaned up, evened out, and uh, the cows will clean it up really well. So as it turns out... Hi, Alex. Hello. Thank Mr. you. <laughs> Thank you for having me here at your office. Thanks for having me, because we're on your channel at the moment. Oh, yeah. We're on my channel, but yeah. at your office. Exactly. Yeah. Um, I mean, okay, so you told me not to tell people that I'm so honored to be here, so I'm not going to say anything. <laughs> <laughs> no, I didn't say that exactly. I, I'm glad to have you in the flesh, because obviously we did a podcast together. Yeah. You were the first guest that I had on the podcast. We'll be live! Hello! <laughs> that is 
adorable. Every time you do that, it's just adorable. I don't know. I can't take it. Yeah. And we're back. Oh, yeah, we're back. We've been away. We have been in a conference with um, the Marim Lamozi, Richard Dawkins, uh, Bobak, uh, the, the, Rivka. The, um, yeah, Rivka, the Kami, um, and who else? So. <laughs> not, not Rivka, the Kami. You're talking Rivka and the Kami. No, and the Kami. Oh, yeah, we love Yeah, so it was fun. Um, Susanna, that was your first first conference. Did you have fun? Yes. Yes? I did. It was a lot for me, mentally and emotionally. <laughs> but yeah. it was still, like, overall, just an absolute joke. But we should post pictures of the conference was, on the... Yeah, on the community tab. I want to post a picture of um, Yumi and Rivka together, because that was too adorable. Yeah. And we should also talk about how our shows are going to be happening at a new time Yes. going forward. So yes. I'm going to be in Europe for the next several months, and we are still figuring out the correct time and days for certain things. It got thrown off this week because um, I am genuinely um, uh, developmentally delayed when it comes to understanding time zones and time differences. Like it screws with my brain so hard. So if there's there will no, it, it, it's not you. It's not you. You're American. That make it makes complete sense. Okay, so oh. <laughs> it's not a you thing. It's an American thing. Okay. By the way, let me just brag about this. You also got confused by the time difference. Formally established on January 31st, 2012, Atheist Republic has grown from a Facebook page you dedicated to giving CBS disbelievers a louder voice to the world's largest community of atheists. What began as... We be live! Hi everyone! Hello! How's everyone doing? We have a special episode today. We're going to, before we answer the Patreon questions, we're going to do some reviews on the event that me and Susanna just went to in Germany, okay? Mm -hmm. We're going to be reviewing my panel today, and if Susanna is willing, maybe another day we'll do review her. You have reached Atheist Republic voicemails. God may not be listening to you, but the citizens of the Atheist Republic are. Leave us a voicemail on atheistrepublic.com for a chance to have your message broadcast to our followers worldwide. Send us your opinions, stories, advice, or concerns. Together, we'll build a platform for atheist voices all around the globe. I live in Alabama, and everyone around me believes in something that's not true. And after 50 years old, people know it. But they still keep up the facade. And after 70, they start praying for it. And it makes me crazy. Are you sure it's now? I mean, maybe I should look at the body, sir. Greetings, my greetings, brothers and sisters around the world. I send my greetings from my brother, in Kenya, in Africa, where we are free, but we are strong. Those who need lives, dead in their superstition, are strong there, and they fight us, and they must stop, but we will never surrender. We are in the age of reason. And we have a responsibility to ourselves and to our brothers and sisters around the world to stand up against unreason and cruelty and sadism that is perpetuated by the religious all over the world 
and in all of history. Let's stand together. Hello Atheist Community or Atheist Republic. Hope all are feeling great and having an amazing time. This is Khaled Haider speaking from Pakistan. So first of all, let me introduce myself. My name is Khaled Haider. I am basically from Afghanistan. For the past eight or nine years, I have been living here in Pakistan as a migrator. And I am belonging from a very, a very strict religious family. My father is an Islamic scholar. My brother is also a Talib Alam studying in Madrasa. He's about to finish. And uh, I am in, I'm, I'm a college student studying in first year, right, in Pakistan, in my family. I started reading my Islam when I faced a lot of non-Muslims like Christians, Jews, and uh, Hindus. I started debating with them and proving, proving very strictly, very wholeheartedly that Islam is the right religion. I was debating with them and proving my points to be clear. But later on I decided to study my own religion because I knew that I, I don't understand it. Because I, I, I finished reading Quran like more than 10 times. But I don't know the meaning, the exact meaning. So I started reading Quran with translation. When I read the whole Quran with translation, I found a lot of contradictions, a lot of violations, a lot of barbaric actions, barbaric revelations. I found a lot of dishonesty and immorality in Quran. Right? After that, I, I collected all those points with, with me in my copy. I, I do have them with me right now. After that, certain questions arise in my, in my mind. I started studying philosophy. When I was, I, I remember when I was in, in, in ninth standard, I bought some books of philosophy, like a uh, book by Stephen Hawking, Brief, uh, Big, Brief Answers to the Big Question, something like that, and another book by Will Durant, which is The Pleasure of Philosophy, and I started reading them. When I was buying those books, Many people were suggesting me not to buy those philosophical books because they will affect my aqidah, they will affect my belief, and it will affect me, it will, it will take me far from Islam. Then I put a question right there in my mind, why these people are not allowing me to study philosophy? If Islam is absolutely the right religion, then why would I get somewhere else? Huh? Why would I get somewhere else from, from the truth? I started reading uh, philosophy and, and a lot of questions arise in my mind. Like, first question is about the free will, the coexistence of free will and determinism and determinism in Islam, right? Like, in Islam, we, we believe that, Muslims believe that if a baby is in his or her embryonic stages, God determines Formally established on January 31st, 2012, Atheist Republic has grown from a Facebook page dedicated to giving disbelievers a louder voice to the world's largest community of atheists. What began as a collection of individuals passionate about expressing their atheism grew to become a place where hundreds of thousands of people have gathered together to build like-minded, godless communities. We've established local communities in over 70 countries and over 150 cities around the globe. We've built a platform for atheists to share their voice in English, Farsi, Arabic, Afrikaans, and <laughs> Our members have truly demonstrated that you don't need God to be a good person by doing everything from helping those living on the street to assisting those who have been displaced by Islamic militants. We've organized international protests in support of atheist prisoners like Sohail Arabi, 
We've even helped atheists like Rana escape death. Atheist Republic is a website on the Facebook and the Twitter for non-believer people uh, for uh, ex-Muslim, ex-Christian, ex-Jewish, uh, any kind of religion. The Kaaba, the most yeah. holiest place, was in the shot. It's two, two million or three million uh, Muslims around me. I was really afraid, you know, if any someone know what I am doing here, they will kill me. But we faced challenges along the way. Our members have been threatened and attacked by their governments. A group known as the Atheist Republic Consulate of Kuala Lumpur held their annual meeting and posted a picture of their group did in public calls for attendees to be imprisoned and executed. We've been harassed and targeted with mass reporting by those who cannot tolerate our dissent from religion. We've been blocked by governments like India and Pakistan, had police reports filed against us for blasphemy countless legal threats, and even mentioned before the Supreme Court of India. Together, we've shown that atheists are everywhere, from the most dangerous of countries to the holiest of sites. Without you, none of these accomplishments would have been possible. If you would like to join us in celebrating, send us a picture of you with our commemorative fan sign share what you love about Atheist Republic or your favorite memories and submit it through our website. Link in the description below. So Reese is crazy? In technical terminology, he's a moon. Sarah, this is what they call body armor. Our tack guys wear them to stop a 12 gauge round. This other individual has been wearing one of his coat. Be that. What about when he punched through the windshield? He was probably on PCP. Broke every bone in his hand and he for hours. There was this guy once. You see this guy? Thank you. There's a couch in this other room. Why don't you stretch out and try to get some sleep? Be at least an hour before your mother gets here from Big Bear. I can't sleep. Try. Well, it may not look it, but that couch is very comfortable. It'll be perfectly safe. We got dirty cops in this building.
Alright, so Pixelism of North America has um, put out this hashtag awesome without a love. Is that right, Mohammed? Awesome without a love, that's what it's called. Hashtag awesome without a love, that's pretty. Uh, I'm, I'm awesome without a love, but the only reason why I'm awesome without a love is because of the ex Muslim community, because of groups like XMNA, ex Muslims of North America. Uh, because I have a lot of support, a lot of people that are. Wow. Out, but a lot of a lot of other ex-Muslims, a lot of people that left Islam, they're not awesome without right. Allah because they're alone. They are, um, they they feel helpless. They are constantly under threat and attacked and demonized and ashamed and abandoned simply because they changed their mind. They just don't believe in something, and it's amazing how just. Not believing in something makes you one of the most targeted groups in the world. I'm lucky enough not to be targeted like many of these people because I have a community. So I suggest you guys use the hashtag Awesome Without Allah to show people that don't have this community, the people that don't believe in Allah anymore and feel alone that there is a community, that they could also be Awesome Without Allah. Yeah, you have no idea for people a lot of people don't understand that how much this community means, how how big of a difference it makes, how big of a difference it makes, and and we we're just getting started, and we need to be there for more more ex-Muslims. A lot of people don't understand the importance of that. So use the hashtag to show that this support and this community exists. Lone River does run. The cars and cuts clear its own path, and the work never done. So follow the Lone River, where the Agave Heart does be. Follow the Lone River, and stand the heat. For you can hear the river call. There's a pool to seek. Same goes if you touch it. You just want a cold drink. Lone River Rest Water. I don't know about you, but I can do it. trying new things, or old things in new ways, or timeless things in timer things. So try Gold Peak, then try something else. This tea is for trying, and ice just got cold. It's like those hash browns, huh? Yeah. Is that on?